How's it going guys? It's Country Tactical here with Corbin in our second episode of Vintage Adventures. In the last episode, we went to one of our most popular flea markets in the area in search of vintage gear with $100 between us. As you can tell, we got some pretty awesome finds. Now in this episode, we're pretty much just gonna be cleaning it all up and getting it ready to be adventured with. Now before we get at it, I wanna apologize for being gone for a little over a month. Now the reason is, is because I had to take every exam and every class that I had. So I had to do tons of studying and it just really stressed me out. As you can see, I broke out. I'm still pretty broke out from all that work and crap I had to do. I just, uh, it was not fun. Also, if my hair does look dyed, it's because I put new acne medicine in. It's pretty strong stuff, but I could tell it dyed my hair because I wasn't really careful with it and just let my hair get into it. It's not very good. But yeah, also, sorry to my Patreons. I refunded y'all for last month because I didn't upload anything. I just felt it wasn't right at all to keep anything because I didn't do anything. So I refunded y'all's money. Thanks for staying with me. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get to cleaning the gear. So here's the gear that we're going to be cleaning up. As you can see, we got the gear and some cleaning supplies. Now we're just going to be like polishing the leather, getting the flashlights working. Now some of these items like the flashlight we got from other sources or we just already had them. Like we got these flashlights. I found these gloves. Pretty much stuff that you haven't seen from the last video is stuff that we had or we got from other places. So first up, Corbin's backpack. As you can tell, there's no leather and the condition is already really good. So I don't think we really have to do anything to it. So I guess you could go ahead and put that on. It looks good. Now next is Corbin's webbing. We got this from elsewhere. This was just an old belt and there's nothing much to it. It's already in really good condition. We don't even need to put leather conditioner on it. It's in good quality, so go ahead and put this on. Already looks good. Now your canteen. So I went back the first Monday the next month and I found this really good canteen. Now the reason I got it is because it has a metal cap unlike the one we bought in the one video. And this one was only four bucks. It didn't have the thing like this, so we can just replace it and it'll be all good. I can feel and I can't smell any aluminum corrosion. So this thing is pretty much good to go, which is great. The cap just has a little bit of aluminum corrosion. We're gonna have to clean that off, but it's not too bad. We can just rub it off with our fingers, it's not that bad. I don't wanna use any steel brushes because it's gonna scrape off the aluminum. Should be fine now. I'm just gonna put this in there. Alrighty, now you got your canteen. It's all good. And it has a metal cap. So you can put it on like this and go exploring. Right, you're already getting kitted up for adventure. Now before he picks up my backpack, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these, the storage backpacks that we got extra. All we need to really do is, you know, get them functional. We're not gonna do much to them just cause they're already pretty weathered and not in good condition. So on this backpack, you can't even open it yet. So what I'm just gonna do, get out my good old Oppenel knife, cut off this string that was fastened here. I don't know. Alrighty. Now, let's say we're on a mini bike, we can just fasten this up to the back or the front and we have stuff to put gear in. We're not going to do much else to it just because we don't really need to. It's not like we're wearing this around. But if we did have to wear it, we could. Now this backpack that we have, pretty much the same. We're going to use it for the same purpose, strapping it on a mini bike just for extra storage. I guess we could use this string tied up, so we don't really need to do anything to this. 
Now onto my backpack. As you can see, it has some leather straps and they are very hard. The leather on this is about to crack and break. So what we need to do is soften that up so it's nice and supple and won't break in the field, which would be a disaster. I'm gonna be using some of this stuff because it's really easy to use and it's convenient. So all I have to do is get a rag like this, open it up and just a little bit of water from my canteen and I'll show you how to use it. All right, I got some of the stuff on there. Just gonna take this. I don't even know if I can do it yet. I need to supple this up first. Kind of rub it in there. The water helps break it in, so. We're just cleaning this up. God, this is so hard. All right, we're just gonna give it some time there and I'm gonna try to unbuckle this strip. Come on. Alrighty, there, you got it. You got it. Alrighty, now to get the other strap. This one is freaking cracked the heck. Rub it on in. getting a little bit softer we're just gonna let this you know soften up a little bit more over the time and then we can get it put on my back what we got next is my webbing set and my knife just fell off so we got next is my webbing set now I'm not gonna use that pistol belt that we got from the last video it's just because this works a lot better and I mean it's just there's no need for it because I already have this you probably saw this from the trench wars that I had this is the belt that I use and I got some Mosin Nagant pouches. This 22 revolver that I have, it does function. Some nice holster and this knife that keeps on falling off. This is what it looks like, it's some stainless steel knife. It says it's made in the USA. So it's pretty good. It's about this thick, if you can tell. Should work fine. Now, what I need to fix about this belt is I wanna make a loop right in the middle. So this hook goes through these holes, but I want the belt to be a little bit looser. So what I need to do is go ahead and tap another hole so I can put this hook through. What we're gonna do is use a little stamping kit that I have, and we're gonna stamp it out. What I'm gonna try to do is make it where I can put a hole right there. Now what I have are some stamps, a brass and copper rivet thingy. Oh crap, I need a drill. I forgot I need a drill. Uh. <laughs> just a second okay so I don't have a proper tap so I can't tap it out and I don't have a vintage drill so I got the next best thing power drill it'll have to do until we get more authentic stuff no it can't oh my god the I think I might have got it. Ah, come on. Yes. Look at that. Ah. Oh my gosh. All right, now we just have to stamp it in. See, we got it in, which is nice. Doesn't have to be perfect. Might be a little bit crooked, but it's good. So I put this big spot on this spot, and as you can see, it fits and it'll hold it still. I tap this in. Now I need a hammer, but I do have this ax. So it should work. You gotta check it occasionally. It's doing good. We need a more stable freaking place to do this, but it should be fine. As you can see, it's expanding out and is gripping onto the leather so it can't be pushed out again. And it was a success. Now we just stamped it in and we can do this to it. Bada bing, bada boom. Gun, our adventure gun. It fits on nicely. Now, a style in the early 1900s, military belts was a high-waisted belt. Now. 
Those usually aren't as comfortable when you don't have suspenders holding it up. So to keep it comfortable why it sags, is I went ahead and put it a little bit below the waist so it just sits there nicely. Now this isn't as tight or isn't as neat, but it's a lot more comfortable than having it up here. Yeah, it's like the Red Dead Redemption um, belts, how they're always like sagging to the side. They did that because it's more comfortable and it just works better that way, so yeah. Now what I want to do next, I want to go ahead and get these gloves and make them a lot more durable and last a lot longer. Now how I'm going to do that, as you can tell, this is suede leather. Come on, close. This is suede leather, as you can see. Now what I want to do is pretty much put some mink oil in it. Yeah, I got some golden mink oil. I'm going to put it in there to help make these gloves waterproof and last a lot longer. Now what they did back in World War I to help preserve their leather boots was they would put dubbing in it. It's similar to mink oil, pretty much almost the same. Now what they'd do is they'd rub the dubbing into the suede leather and it'd help waterproof it and help it last a lot longer in the muddy trenches. So it was very necessary to have that and we're going to be going through a lot with these gloves so I think it's pretty necessary to put some good old mink oil. How I'm going to apply the mink oil is I'm going to pretty much rub it in there as I have it on my hand so it'll be easy. Here's the mink oil. Running pretty low because I apply these to my boots. Now here's the mink oil. I'm just gonna there's another step to this but I'll show you that after I apply this all in there. Put it in the seams. Now this is permanently gonna make the glove darker but It'll last longer and be better. Mink oil is made out of animal fat and it was discovered back when hunters and trappers put it on their boots and discovered it would help preserve it. So it's very old, been used for a long time. It's definitely time proven. If you ever get new suede boots, especially like World War I boots or any reproduction, definitely put mink oil or dubbing on your boots because if not, they're gonna get wet, dry, and harden. And I messed up a whole pair from not doing that. So apply mink oil or dubbing the first thing as soon as you get them. It's very important. Now I got this glove. As you can see, there's a color difference. Now it is permanent. Now what I have to do is go ahead and get the second glove. Get it all in there. All in the seams. Now what you want to really do to make sure the leather soaks up all the oil is you're going to want to take some heat. Now you typically use like a hair dryer to melt it in there, but if you're outside, I guess you could use a lighter. I've never done this before, just going to see how it works. Okay, maybe we're going to have to use a hair dryer. <laughs> I thought we'd be able to do it out here with this, but it's too darn windy. Bam! Works. Now you'll see it slowly like drying out into the leather. Heating up the leather allows the oil to sink into every little seam and pour whatever in the leather. Now there's multiple ways of doing the heating. You can heat up the leather beforehand and just put on the oil from there. You can heat it up as you're putting the oil on or you can do it like I'm doing it which is putting it on then heating it up so yeah most of it already soaked into the leather probably because the leather was so dry and it was pretty hot outside so the leather is already pretty hot so now with the added mink oil the color has definitely changed from tan to this dark brown now this is gonna help waterproof the glove and help it last a lot longer because now contact with water is just gonna be right off in fact I can show you any water as you can see, it's beating and it comes right off. You can get your whole hand wet, shake it off, and you're good. See, look at that. Now with the leather before, the water would just soak in and it would be in there. Your hand would be wet. Then after the water dries off, the glove is going to get all hard and can crack. So that's how it really helps this glove last a lot longer. So if you add suede leather, put mink oil or dubbing on it because it'll be worth it. I can't feel a thing. It's really good. Look at that. I literally just did that and it's freaking dry again. 
And occasionally you're gonna have to add more mink oil and dubbing onto the glove every once in a while or heavy uses because it still will kind of rub off. So the last thing that we're really gonna need to fix up and clean are the flashlights. This flashlight already works as you can tell it's nice. Now we, these ones do not work at all. Now we're gonna want to get them to that condition and I'm not too sure if we'll be able to even do that into this video because I'm not like a professional with flashlights so there could be some underlying problem that I have no clue about but what we're gonna try to do in this video is try to like give them a nice deep cleaning. You got these two flashlights. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this one first. I guess I need to prove that these don't work. One. All right, there, I got it in. So as you can tell, it does not work. I tested the fuses or the light bulbs on that flashlight and they, the light bulbs do work. It's just something with the battery power to the light. So we're gonna have to figure out what the problem with that is. Now these flashlights are very old, not too sure the exact year, but around the 50s, 40s, and 60s. And I'm not too sure what exactly I'm going to do. I'm going to try to clean as much corrosion off as I can. Now if this light does not work, I'm not even going to try it with this one because this one has a ton of corrosion in it. This thing is caked. A little bit of rubbing alcohol, cleaning off some of that corrosion. Hopefully I'm not jacking anything up right now because some of it's leaking down. Should have got some steel wool. Damn. Alright, let's see if it turns out a moment of truth. No, it's just not gonna fucking work. Okay, I will admit, had no plan of how I was gonna fix these. I thought they'd just magically work. If I put some alcohol on it, which obviously they did not. Probably the best thing I can do with this is take it inside, get a desk out, completely strip this thing apart, clean every freaking connection with proper cleaning stuff. And that might make it work, but it might not even be worth the money since these are so cheap. Alrighty, as you can see, most of the things we got are fixed up now. What we're gonna do now is we're probably gonna just be testing out our kit and you know, putting it all on. Go ahead and go do a little mini adventure and see what we come across. So yeah, let's get to testing. <laughs> so there's this piece of leather on my back that didn't quite get supple enough and it's kind of like digging into my shoulder blade. So it kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah.
Yeah. Sharp in the snipe. A little freaking bit. Oh, look at my gloves. found blackberries. Look, we got our food right here. Mm. Tons of them. Tons of blackberries. So that pretty much wraps us hiking around. We found some blackberries and stuff. So it was yummy. But yeah, our gear worked out pretty well. And it's all good. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys for watching and we should have the next episode up where we actually probably go adventure in an abandoned place. That should be up soon just because it is summer and we can do a lot more videos on a lot more time so it's a lot better now also thanks to our patreon supporters they help make this stuff possible so if you'd like to help fund and support this stuff feel free to link is in the description anyways see you guys next week adventure bros out okay the weirdest thing just happened we just finished recording the outro and he somehow got that thing to work how did you dude it's in my blood my dad's an electrician he Wait, I just bloop. what did you do? How did you turn it on? It's worked it's awesome. Okay, now we have to fix that one. All right, just give me a okay, let's fix it. Let's fix it.